God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Be blessed as you listen. So if you have your Bibles, brothers and sisters, if you, if you have your Bible, I'd like you to turn to the book of Romans. Book of Romans. And we will be reading from verse 29. 29. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody need a little time to find the book of Romans. It's not in the Old Testament. So if you look in the Old Testament, you're not going to find it. <laughs> we'll flip to the New Testament. It's one of the writings of the Apostle Paul. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah. In verse 29, Scripture says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. I'm reading Romans chapter 8. I just read Romans chapter 8. I just read 29. Amen. And the verse 30 says, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Somebody give God praise in this place. What a powerful verse of scripture. And in verse 31 it said, What shall we then say to these things? These things that we just read, what shall we then say to them? These things. Hallelujah. If, and the word if they underline it, it will be better translated since or because. It's causative. Since God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemned? It is Jesus that died. Yea, rather... That is reason again. Who is he that is even at the right hand of God who also make an intercession for us? Now 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 30, 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. And Lord, we pray that your word will enter into our hearts today for the entrance of the word of God into the heart of man makes a simple man get knowledge and understanding. 
Father, I pray that thy word will bless us today and transform us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. From the reading of the scripture that we just did, I titled this message today, Designed for Glory. Designed for Glory. And if you look at the word of God we read, it said God foreknew us, God predestined us, and God called us, and God justifies us, and then God glorifies us. The sequence by which God executes his plan to bring us to the ultimate plan for our lives is what we read in the book of Romans. To design is the creation of a plan. God creates a plan or a convention for the construction of an object or a system. And we talk about glory as the splendor and the beautiful happiness of heaven. Broadly described, eternity. So God's aim is to bring you and me to eternal life. We're running a race, and this race will end somewhere. A race is never a continuum. It will end somewhere. Our lives someday is going to come to a screeching halt. For us who are Christians, we have a better hope. And Christians shouldn't be afraid of the finality of life. There's one or two ways by which we go to heaven. If heaven is my ultimate goal as a Christian, then I need to recognize that there's one of two ways to get there. The first way is by the way of rapture, what we call in Christian race, uh, Christianity as rapture. Rapture means that you are cut up or taken out of this world. And the second way is by death. Christians don't die, Christians fall asleep. Because there is a resurrection thereafter that. You just took a break from this world. And waiting for that day when the trumpet will sound out of heaven. And therefore Christians are not afraid of rapture. Because we are prepared for it. Christians are not afraid of death. Because death had been defeated. 2,000 years ago Jesus defeated death. And so we must be prepared For this event that we are called, the finality and the ultimate goal of God's plan is to bring the church to a place of glory. And so Paul the Apostle describes the sequence of events leading up to that. And therefore the book of Romans is the longest of the Pauline epistles. Paul wrote about half the New Testament. And the book of Romans is the longest of all his writing. And it's considered as his spiritual, theological, and literal legacy. Written to the church in Rome and indeed sent across the world. So this book is not just for the saints in Rome. It's for you and me living a Christian life today and running the Christian race. In Rome was a place of predominantly Gentile people. And there were Jews who had come to Rome to live in Rome. And when the church was established, the church was a combination of Jewish Christian and Roman Christian worshiping God together. And within that mix were issues of salvation, whether or not Salvation is through the law or through circumcision. Or whether salvation is by faith. And Paul set out right into this church to attempt to explain to them, both Jews and Gentiles, that the relationship, our covenantal relationship with Christ is the basis of salvation. It's not circumcision or legality or legalism. It's not the law. It is our faith in Jesus. The law is a moral compass given to humanity to stir up our conscience. But ultimately what brings me to relationship with Jesus is my faith in the Lord. So he tries to explain to them that we have a common 
heritage, whether Jews or Gentiles. God is the father of all by creation. Every single man, every single woman who is alive today, God is our father by virtue of creation. But not all are children of God. God is our father by virtue of the fact that he created us. Not evolution. The creation, as written and described in the book of Genesis, man was created in the image of God. And the image of God created he, male and female. And therefore, by virtue of creation, God is our father. But not every man or woman who live on the planet of earth today is a child of God. And I'm sure you heard that word that we all are children of God. You are a child of God by virtue of your relationship with Jesus. If you have no foundation of belief in Jesus Christ, you cannot claim to be a child of God. And so Paul specially wrote this to assure Gentiles of the completeness of their salvation. That man and woman is justified. Only by faith. Not by works. Only by faith. He came to his own, the Bible says about Jesus. But his own received him not. But as many as believed in him, whether Jews or Gentiles, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And therefore in the writing of Paul in the book of Romans, he said even creator. Years in expectation for the manifestation of the children of God. God will want and nature will want a manifestation of God's own children. And when you give your heart to Jesus, Jesus comes into you, abides with you, empowers you, anoints you. And you make a difference in our world. And God is counting on you and me to bring the glory of God to the places where we are, whether we live in cities or we live in suburbs or we live in villages, to bring the power and the glory of God to humanity. And so you go back to the scripture that we read. He talks about we've been called. That you are called person. You did not just walk into this because you wanted to. You came because the love of God drew you to himself. Hallelujah to God. The love of God drew us to himself. And that's what God is speaking to us in this season. Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. It's not any man, it's not any woman, but Jesus. We celebrate Jesus' birth, the giving of the Messiah. For the salvation of mankind. We in our humanity and the works that we do could not satisfy the holy demand of a just God. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That if any man, don't matter how you were born, where you were born, how you look like, how tall, how short. If any man believe in this Jesus. He will not perish, but he will have eternal life. That is the ultimate goal that God has set for humanity. You see, at the end of the road in a physical or Christian race, we're going to stand before the Lord God Almighty. And one question that I believe God is going to ask each and every one of us is, have you or did you receive Jesus? As your Lord and personal Savior. If I cannot answer that question in the affirmative. To say yes I have Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I do have the opportunity today to right the wrongs. And receive Christ into my heart. And be saved. And have a reservation in heaven. That on that day he receive you and say to you. Come into my rest. Thou just. And faithful servant. Hallelujah to God. Glory to Jesus. If we go back to the text. That we read. Verse 
verse 29. He said, For whom he did foreknow. For whom he did foreknow. The foreknowledge of God is described in the sense that he knows everything from the beginning to the ending and everything in between them. There's nothing that goes by that's outside of the knowledge of God. His eye runs through and through the whole earth. He supervises the entirety of the universe. He's in charge. God has not lost control of the universe. He is absolutely in charge of what happens in the entire universe. From the galaxies up above us to what happens in the earth realm. And that's why he's God. That's why there's none beside him. That's why there's none ever that can be like him. His foreknowledge is described in the sense that he knew it. That today you are going to be sitting here. A born again child of the living God. And Paul saying to these Christians. God foreknew that you will be saved. Whether you be Gentile or you be Jew. And it said, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. He also did predestinate. To do what? To be conformed. Folks have interpreted this to mean that God selected certain number of people. From all over the world to be part of his kingdom. It's not a natural spiritual selection. Glory to God. What he's saying is that God wants every single person that is born of the water, born of the blood, to be confirmed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why he writes in the book of Romans, chapter 12, that we be confirmed. Be not confirmed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. God wants us to be like Jesus. Our ultimate goal is to be like Jesus when he was here on planet earth. He was yet sinless. He faced every single thing that we're facing today. All of the pressures of life. He was the son of a camper. And he wasn't a camper a shop. And he did what every little kid would do. He ran errands like you. He grew up to become a man. And he did everything that we're doing today. But one thing that Jesus would not do was to offend his father. He lived a life of sinlessness. And God also expects that from us. To keep our bodies from sin. To keep our heart from sin. To guard our heart with all diligence. Because out of it comes the issues of life. And Jesus related with people. You do unto others as you would that others would do to you. And Jesus did to others. As he would that others would do to him. How is your interpersonal relationship? You know we do the sign of the cross sometimes. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I know, I know Pentecostal folk who do the sign of the cross. God bless your heart. But in reality it shows your relationship with God as first. And then your relationship with your neighbor. How deep is my relationship with God? My vertical relationship. How deep is it? And the depth of my vertical relationship with God determines the depth of my horizontal relationship with my neighbor. And you cannot love your neighbor if you do not love yourself. That's what Christ said. He said, love your neighbor as you what? As you love yourself. And you cannot love others if you don't love yourself. Hate and evil 
Start from you. It's right here starting from you. A lot of times we blame the devil from every little thing that happened. And the devil is so far away. Not even close by. It's the devil's fault. How about your fault and my fault? You have and I have a huge responsibility to God and to people around me. And he said also that moreover he that God had predestinate or uh, proposed to be confirmed to the image of his dear son, he said, them also he has called. Calling could be seen here in two different ways. There's a general universal call for everybody to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Know what Jesus said in John chapter 6? He said, no man come to the Father. And said they called by him. You are not here today if God would not have called you. You will not be sitting here today had God not called you to himself. Jesus, after he was baptized and he was ready for ministry, he went about and began to call individuals. He called Peter, called his brother, called everybody, all of the 12 disciples, called them all together. And God has extended that invitation to you to come to the saving knowledge of his dear son. And there's a calling that God gives to us, Christians calling to ministry. And some of us sitting here today, God has called you to ministry. But what you're saying is, here am I, Lord, send them. Because you have not answered the call of God's calling on your life. And guess what? He's not going to send them. He's going to send you and you and you. Amen. Hallelujah. When he called Paul, Paul was not ready for God until God met him on the way to Damascus. And Elijah shone out of heaven and knocked him over. And when Paul got up, he used that word, Lord, what would you have me do for you? And God needs to bring us to a point in life where we recognize him as Adonai, my Lord and my God, which means my master and my owner. Glory to God. He said, him that he has called, when God calls, God also justifies. When God calls, God also justifies. Now think about this for a minute. Somebody has been accused and brought to the justice system. And he appears in court. And the prosecutor and defense weaknesses are there. And somehow the judge stands up or sits or however. And makes a ruling. And find this person not guilty. And that's what God has done. For you who are saved today. And for those who are not, God wants to declare us not guilty. He justifies you when he declares you not guilty. And if you go on in this scripture, that's why the Bible says, Who shall bring a charge against the laws elect? It is God who justifies. When God throws your sin into the sea of forgetfulness, it don't matter who goes in there fishing for it to dig it up. God never remember that you ever did that. That's why Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things in my life has become new. My past is gone. Hallelujah to God. Somebody give him praise here. That is the beauty of Christianity and the beauty of God. That God accepts a sinner who's willing to say, Lord, I confess my sins. I forsake my sins. And God declares him not guilty. 
as a result or by virtue of the blood of Jesus. Because Jesus is there speaking on his behalf. Jesus is speaking on your behalf right now. It don't matter what the enemy try to bring against you. Jesus' blood wipes you clean. Hallelujah to God. You can come into the presence of God by the new and the living way. Even by the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody help me give him glory. Hallelujah to Jesus. If God calls you. If you feel a calling in your life. God also has justified you. You know the mistake that a lot of Christians make is that they live in the past. You cannot be successful as a Christian if you're living in the past. You, know, you need to let the past go with the past. Guess what? You cannot change your past. But you can shape your future by the choices you make today. If you make choices of faith, you're shaping your future. Hallelujah. You're shaping your environment. If you understand the word of God and what the word of God says about you and you're willing to internalize those words, you're willing to believe those words, you're willing to walk by those words, you're willing to confess those words, your future will be brighter and brighter until a perfect day. That's what the word of God is for. For those who are willing to take a stab at it and use it for the glory of God and the benefit of their life here on earth. Somebody help me praise him for his word. Hallelujah to God. He said, if God has called you, God has justified you. He has set you free, make you free. For whosoever the Son of Man makes free is free indeed. Hallelujah. He paid the price for you. He paid your death. He paid for you to be made free. And because you are made free, you are no longer, you are no longer tied to the debt that you owe the devil. You owe this world. Hallelujah to God. The love of Jesus is upon you. The love of Jesus is with you wherever you go. Hallelujah to God. He said, if he, if he, if he called you, he said, he, justifies you he makes you clean he makes you not guilty and then finally he said he will glorify you he will glorify you now brothers and sisters when you got time you can read romans chapter 5 from verse 1 he said therefore being justified by faith being justified by faith we have peace with god through whom through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus becomes the pivot for our relationship with God. He said, you cannot come to God. You cannot seek God except through him. Folks may present you other means of meeting God. And there are folks who believe there are many roads to get to God. You can go through this or go through that or go through the other road. But you know what Christ said? He said, I am the way. And not a way. I am the way. There's one way to God. And Christ said and declares, I, Christ, I am the way. And I am the truth. And I am the life. Glory to God. So if you're looking for a way to eternity... I present that way to you in the man, Jesus Christ, who was born at such a time like this so many years ago, whom the Lord chose to redeem man from the sinfulness of our way, whom God anointed. In Bible says, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And this man walked this earth. Hallelujah. And there was nobody, no man could withstand the wisdom which God gave to him. He went to the temple, mesmerized them. He brought a new message to humanity. That through your faith in Christ, you can be saved. Hallelujah. And those who were sick came to him. He healed them all. Folks who were demon possessed, who could not help themselves. Jesus 
released them from demonic oppression. And those who were hungry, Jesus fed them. He fed the 5,000. He fed the 4,000. He made miracles to feed people. When they lacked something, Jesus filled in the gap. And that's what he's here for. Whatever you lack in your life, you can count on him. Hallelujah. That he will come through for you. Glory to God. Even if you get to the end of your road, God will make a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. That's why he said he is the way. Glory to God. I don't know where you are heading for right now, but God is on your side. And that's why the Bible declares, if God be for you, who can be against you? Somebody give him praise in this hour. Give him glory here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody tell you that Jesus cannot do it. He is the answer to the world today. Glory to God. What brings us into the presence of God is Christ Jesus. And Bible says that he make peace between you and God. And it happens through a justification by faith. In verse 2, Romans chapter 5, it said, By whom also, by whom also, we have access. We have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope in the glory of God. He is the way. We have access by him. Through him, we have access. Do you need access to God's grace? Do you need access to God's mercy? Do you need access to God himself? Jesus is the access. He said he has the key of David. When he opens, no man can shut. And when he shut, no man can open. He's got the last word. Hallelujah. When he said you're blessed, you're blessed. No man can curse you. Glory to God. When he promotes you, no man can demote you. Glory to God. When he seats you, no man can unseat you. When he prepares a table before you, no man can pull the table from you. When he lifts you up, no man can bring you down. He has the key. When he says yes, nobody can say no. Somebody help me give him praise here. That's why we love him. That's why we serve him. Because he come through for us when we least expect it. Glory to God. He will not let you down, my God. If you have faith in him, if you believe in him, he will not let you down, my God. Hallelujah. He said, by whom also we have access, by faith into this grace. And we are in. We stand. We stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And Paul not only wrote what was in his heart and what the Holy Spirit gave to him. He wrote what he practiced. He found himself many times being beaten by people. Whooped so many times. His own countrymen disowned him. Folks rose up against Paul. He was afflicted on so many sides. But you know how he described it? He said, this light affliction is but for a season. All that he went through, he described them as light affliction. None of us sitting here today, if I may declare, is going through what Paul went through. You may think that you're going through so much right now in your life. What I am going through and you're going through, it's nothing compared to what Paul went through. And you say, Pastor, how do you know that? Yes, I do. Because none of us here today has been threatened to be killed because of our faith. And if somebody would have come to you and said, deny your faith or accept Jesus or be killed, what are you going to do? And I know folk who deny Jesus for that minute. And say, Christ, forgive me. I need to deny you right now. After this persecution goes by, we can be friends again. But that's not what Paul did. Glory to God. He said, I was not ashamed of the gospel. It is a part of God unto salvation. First delivered to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Glory to God. And he was willing to take on the mantle of apostleship. 
as the apostle to the Gentiles and went through perils and yet stood his ground for God, did not deny Jesus. And on the day that he was beheaded before Emperor Nero, yet this man stood his faith with God and was willing to be received into glory because he knew it that I have run the race and I have finished the race and I have run a good race and there reserved for me in heaven a crown not only for me but for those who would thereafter run this race glory to God and so he went through so much and none of us here today can claim that we have gone through what Paul went through glory to God and so he has the audacity to write these words because he was writing not only out of conviction but also out of experience and he said again that by whom we have access by faith unto the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. What matters to this man was the finality of his experience with God. That someday he's going to step out of the natural into the supernatural. Someday he's going to step out of this ignoble world. Into a glorious world. Hallelujah. A place reserved for him in the presence of Jesus. And yet he was willing to stand until the end. You know what Jesus said? He said, any man who lays his hand on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. When you have your hand on the plow, you should maintain your hands on the plow. Hallelujah. Ain't no looking back. Looking back, you become a pillar of salt. Like Lord's wife, glory to God. Looking back, meaning desiring again the cucumbers in Egypt. They desire to go back to Egypt and saying to Moses, I dare no food in Egypt, meat in Egypt, fish in Egypt. I dare no cemetery in Egypt. Why have you brought us here into the wilderness to perish? But they did not realize that God was bringing them to their promised land. Hallelujah. A land that flows with milk and with honey. Better than what was in the world. If the world can provide you anything, I tell you God can surpass what the world can provide for you. Glory to God. If the world can provide you love, God will surpass that love. If the world can provide you riches, God will surpass that riches. There's nothing compared to what God will provide for you. Come on, somebody give him praise right now. Hallelujah. And the question then is, why are we seeking after this world? This world is not our home. We're just passing through it. We are on a journey. We are passing through this world. Abraham was called. Didn't know where he was going. But yet he obeyed the calling. And the Bible said he lived in cave. From one cave to the other. And he was looking for a country. That has a foundation. Whose builder is God. We are looking for eternal home. We are looking for a place that's better than this. We are looking for a place that's more glorious than this. Where there's no more tears. Where there's no more suffering. Where there's no more sickness and disease. Where we don't have to take medicine anymore. He'll be our health. Glory to God. Where we don't have to be popped up to be happy. He'll be our joy. Glory to God. Where there's never going to be darkness nor power failure. He'll be our light. Hallelujah. Somebody help me give him glory right now. Give him glory. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that after he justifies you, he will glorify you. And look at what Jesus said. John chapter 11. That's a story where Jesus was told that his friend Lazarus was dead. Had been sick. And Jesus knew all about it. See, brothers and sisters, Jesus knew and he knows what you're going through. He knows the end of what you're going through right now. He knows it. And when they came to Jesus, Jesus knew that his friend was not going to die. And he was sick. And then he slept. And they thought he was dead. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> and Jesus came to town. And the sisters of his friend came to him and said, Jesus, if you were here, 
my brother would not have died. And Jesus said to them, he's not dead. He's just sleeping. He's not dead. He's just sleeping. And he said, this has happened for the glory of God. You see, a lot of things happen in our life for the glory of God. We don't comprehend or understand the full extent of what is going on, but God is got it under control. That's why he's God. And if you go back to the passage we read, for verse 28, it said, all these things work together for the good of those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. God is working them together for who? For your good. And so when Jesus showed up, Jesus said to them, my friend cannot die. Death cannot take my friend from me. You know, he no longer calls us slaves. He calls us his friends. And the same thing says Lazarus. And Lazarus sisters said, my friend cannot die. You cannot die. Death cannot take you. Glory to God. Death had no power over you. Grave had no power over you. Jesus defeated them so many years ago. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they said to Jesus, we know. We know this. We know based on the teachings of the Old Testament. We know it. That our brother will rise up on the last day. And Jesus said, we're not talking about last day. Now we're talking about now. Now faith is the substance of things so far. The evidence of things not seen. We're not talking about the future. We're talking about now faith. Now. And they said, we, we, know, we know it's going to be okay in the by and by. They said, we're not talking about the by and by right now. We get a deal with today. We got to deal with today. Hallelujah. And there are a lot of us who have accommodated certain things in our life and hoping that in the by and by it's going to be all right. That's, that's not full gospel. That's not good theology. That has to be corrected. It's not about being better in the by and by. It's about now faith. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the title deed of things not seen. How many of you know that when you have the title deed, you are the rightful owner of that thing? Whether it be property, whatever it is, when you have that title, until you have the title deed, you cannot claim rightful ownership. And faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the title deed of the unseen. You have not seen it, yet you have the title deed. And you are looking for it. If I were to give you the title deed for my house, and you are far away from that location, what's going to happen? You hold the title deed, you are searching for the address. And when you find the address, you can present the title deed to the occupants and say, I am the new owner, you need to vacate this property. And will they obey you? Of course they will, by the virtue of the fact that you hold on to the title deed. Why is it that a bank can repossess your car? Because they hold the title deed. That's a legal foundation upon which they can come to the malls and the person is out shopping. And by the time he comes out, the car is gone. And he has no recourse. You cannot go to court to claim it back because he has not been paying the car note. And so the car is gone. And the bank has the audacity to do that and let you take a cab home because they have the title deed. So when you have the title deed of faith, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be cast to the other side. And the mountain may say, what audacity do you have to tell me this? And you reach out in your pocketbook and you bring out your title deed. This is my title deed. And the enemy must vacate. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
That's what gave Israel the audacity to come into the promised land. And said to everybody, quit the promised land by daybreak tomorrow. And I'm sure the folk out there didn't want to leave. And they told them, what audacity do you have? And they said, the father, daddy gave, us, gave it to us. They told us, this is our land. Daddy said to us last night, we come in here, we possess it because I have given it to you. That's my title deed. And the same thing, Moses, standing before Pharaoh and saying to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Pharaoh said to Moses, what authority do you have to challenge the superpower of the then world and the greatest monarchy of the then age? And Moses said to him, Jehovah has sent me to say to you, let his people go. That was his title deed. When you have the title deed, you can claim your stuff. You can walk right into the enemy's camp and take back that which belonged to you. Because daddy gave it to you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When he shows up on your door, you can tell him, go next door. This is not your place. You got no place here. Because daddy has given you the title deed. Hallelujah to God. And he said, Jesus, come into Martha and Mary. Lazarus had been buried. And Jesus said, it's not later on, it's now. Because the man is sleeping. Jesus, why didn't you come an hour ago? The man is not dead. The man is sleeping. Jesus, why didn't you come yesterday? The man is not dead. The man is sleeping. Jesus, he is in the cemetery. No, he is in the holiday inn. He is just taking a rest for holiday. He'll be coming right back. You just need to wait I'm going to bring him right back. And what happened? And Jesus said to them, I am the resurrection and the life. Any man who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall not die. Believeth thou this? Do you believe that I can do and sitting abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think. Do you believe that with God nothing shall be impossible? Do you believe that God can do anything? There's nothing he cannot do. Do you believe the power of your God? And Jesus casually walked before them and came to the cemetery. And said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus woke up. Because his master came to call him. His master did what? Came to call him. God is calling you right now. Calling you out of that mess that you found yourself. You don't belong there. Like the prodigal son, he went to the far country. And he began to eat with pigs. He didn't belong there. And one day he came to himself and heard the voice of his daddy calling him out. And he said, today I must go back to my daddy. I have more than enough in my daddy's house. I have more for, to put in store. I'm going back right now. Are you ready to return to your daddy? You ready to say to that situation, I'm returning to my daddy. I'm going back home. I do not belong in this place. And I said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth. He calls your name. You ought to come forth. Cause out of sickness, cause out of disease, cause out of oppression. You ought to come forth by faith. Because he called it thee. <laughs> Glory to God. I like the story of the, of the blind man who was by the wayside and had been hollering, 
Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. And then Jesus stopped the train. And Jesus asked one of his associates, go get him. And they came to him and said to him, the master, call it D. And he got up from that place throughout his court and came to Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said that I may see. Hallelujah. Some of us are blind spiritually. We need to answer that call. That I may see. Some of us can hear spiritually. We need to answer that call. That I may hear. Some of us can perceive spiritually. We need to answer that call. That I may perceive. Somebody help me give him glory. Hallelujah. And what we see. Finally as we close. In the scripture. That we read. Is God's abiding presence explained to us that if God be for you, which means that God is with you, it's better translated since God is with you. I want you to be able to go around with the consciousness or God's consciousness, the consciousness that God is with you. That wherever you go, you carry the presence of Jehovah. That he is with you. And it shows us God's unlimited supply displayed. That if he gave you Jesus, why won't he through him freely give us all things? So which means that God, by virtue of giving Jesus his son, will with him. Now, understand that word. Will with him. Will with him. You have to be with Jesus to have will with him. Jesus is never removed from the equation. If it's taken out of the equation, the equation cannot balance. It will be unbalanced. God will with him, with Christ, freely give us all, not some. All things. Is your desire part of all things? Is your prayer part of all things? If the answer is yes, then you are in the right place where God will freely, freely give us all things. Is the unlimited supply of God. Hallelujah. It shows also The God's unending love is demonstrated in the verse of scriptures that we read. His love is unending. Hallelujah to Jesus. It is Jesus who died. Not only that he died, it's Jesus who rose from the dead. And it's Jesus who's making intercession for us. In verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of God or the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or even the sod? For it is written, for thy sake we were killed all day long. We are counted as sheep. For the slaughter. And nay, verse 37, in all of these things, not some of them, in all of these things, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, and the sword. It said, in all of these things, we are what? More. Glory to God. We are what? More. That we are not just conquerors, we are more. Then conquer us. We are more than conquerors. How? 
through him that what loved us that's how we are more than conqueror because we have him by us who loved us the battle is never yours the battle is not mine but the battle is the lord's and when god comes into the battlefield you know what happened the outcome is decided already because he is the almighty hallelujah he is the almighty god king of kings and lord of lord somebody help me give him praise in this house if god be for you don't matter what is against you you are more than a conqueror you are an overcomer in this world you overcome hallelujah you are the winning side hallelujah somebody give him praise right now give him a shout in this place if you are a winner give him a shout in this place if you are a victor give him a shout in this place if you're more than a conqueror hallelujah to god thank god that made us more than a conqueror hallelujah let us pray father we thank you right now we give you glory and praise thank you for this word lord we receive it with thanksgiving and god will leave this place today in courage that god you are on our side and if god be for us nobody can be against us you have made us more than a conqueror in this world thank you lord for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.jcisking.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for 9.30 a.m. intercessory prayer and 10 a.m. services, or on Wednesdays for 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study. We are located at 396 Vesey Street, off of Branch Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is King, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.